Hello, this is Chris Petrie. Welcome back. We're doing part two on glazings and watercolor. And on our first part of this series, we actually described how we're going to break our painting down into glazings using uh, lighter washes first, and then um, letting them dry completely. So here we have our, our painting we did in part one. So we let that completely dry. We did the sky wash and then the washes in the water. And we let some of that blue color wash over the um, middle ground areas, the background areas in the distance, as well as the foreground areas, because that's going to be a nice overall light glazing of color, um, which is a good backdrop for the other glazings we're going to put on uh, at this point. So if, if you skip part one, please go back. That'll give you the idea of doing the first glazing with lots of water and, you know, so a little bit of paint, but mostly water and getting in that first glazing and wash of beautiful blue color here, which was a mixture of cobalt blue, cerulean blue, and a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue. We also had a preliminary sketch underneath, a contour drawing. Um, so you can contour draw any type of subject matter, but here this is a nice uh, water scene with a boat and a, some buildings in the background, maybe a factory or a um, school or office building or something of that nature along the waterway and a, and a nice boat and then some foreground area here. And so our paper we let completely dry again. So we did our first glazing, let that completely dry. We took a 15-20 minute break and let this dry and now it's ready we can go in and we can start doing our second uh, glazing and as always we just make sure we're we're gonna clean our palette so we take our spritzer bottle and spritz some paint on uh, spritz some water on we clean our palette all the time as we paint and take breaks And then we'll, we'll start in with our second glazing. And here we're going to use, um, I would say let's go into some, some burnt, uh, burnt sienna, a little bit of cad red, maybe a little uh, burnt umber. and maybe some alizarin crimson too. So here we have a nice um, really good mixture of some reds and, and earth tones, some browns, maybe even a little bit of the raw sienna, some, some of the gold, goldish color. And then we'll go in and we'll, we'll do this building. And as I go, I have some tissue to blot up some extra water because I want to keep this this mixture a little more. Um, I don't want as much water in this mixture like the first glazing. We were keep remember we're keeping this. This is our second glazing now, so we're we're going to go with less water and more paint. And I'm just going to paint along this, the uh, wall. So this would be a wall here, you can see, just behind the boat. There's a, a, a sea wall along this riverbank. And then we'll vary some, we'll vary some color. Maybe we'll make this a little more lighter in tonal value.
And then for some variation, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, sap green. A little bit of sap green and just mix that in a little bit to the uh, to the red just to reds a very uh, extremely vibrant color and very high intensity so if we add a little green to it it sort of just you know mellows it out a little bit and I think we're looking pretty nice on the um, on the buildings here and I think for the roofs maybe we'll go with a maybe some bluish gray roofs so I'm just gonna put some cerulean blue French ultramarine maybe some burnt umber in there too kind of a grayish blue mixture and then we'll do the roofs here and I'm using a little less water than I did for the sky and the water but still I'm using a fair amount of water and here you can see I'm sort of leaving some space because that water is going to want to sort of mix and mingle into the red the uh, bluish gray roof area so to avoid that I let that dry a little bit so I'm just gonna I'm gonna tie that together that roof line there with the wall brick brick wall here but I'm gonna wait a little while so in some spots I let it touch but I try to keep a bit of a separation so it doesn't get too too out of control with the with the uh, water mingling and mixing on the paper and then I'll go into some more cadmium red and a little bit of burnt sienna for the chimneys here and here we're having fun we're, we're just doing a, a small composition getting used to the glazing technique So things are coming along pretty good here and let's say for that seawall let's use some of that mixture we used the, the gr for the roofs we'll use that same mixture except we'll just we'll use maybe we won't go as uh, we'll, we'll lighten it up a little bit we, we'll make that seawall a little bit lighter we won't make it as dark as the roof but we'll use the same paint so it has a nice harmony with the roof so we're actually trying to stick with the same paints we were using on our palette to sort of have a harmony to the painting so it's the same colors as this up here just we just added a little more water to it and so that it's a little bit of a lighter tonal value and then we're gonna let some of that go into the blue and there I might have crossed over I don't I don't think I think it would look better without the shadow area under the boat so I just lift some of that up with the with some tissue if you ha find you have an area that something gets a little bit you put a, a little bit of a wash in an area that you're not happy with you just take quick up tissue and blot it up and there you have it you can blot up a little bit of water um, water and paint off the paper and Okay, and that's looking pretty good. Now here for the water. I made that just a little touch darker. Maybe just so that it you can kind of see the separation between the the water and the and the wall there. 
All right, that's looking good. Okay, so now we're sort of really, we've just done our, our uh, second, second glazing. And sometimes the temptation is to keep going and going and going and instead of like taking a break. So here, let's take another break. I left some white highlights on the roof here. At this point, I might add a little bit of just the, taking a taking the brush and just tapping in a little bit of water and paint. And I think we can also, at this point, it's a perfect time. We're going to clean up the palette. I dip my paper towel in the water, and we wipe up our palette. This is a good time maybe just to rough in some of the foreground. And I'll do some sap green, some olive green, some raw sienna. So that's raw sienna, I mean uh, burnt sienna, sap green, olive green. And here we're just maybe scrubbing a little bit of color. We'll go over this again. And then maybe a little bit of extra, a little bit of water in there. And then we could just do a couple little splashes. Like that, along the uh, the weeds here and the in the brush. Okay, all right. So let's let let's let this dry. This glaze. Let's let this glazing dry. And then once this completely dries, we'll come back in and we'll do our final glazings. We'll finish up the boat. Some trees in the background. We'll do some details with the masts of the boat. And maybe a little, um, some bushes and things here in the foreground, some twigs and things just to kind of finish it off. So that's the second part of the glazing. We did our second glazing. We used less water on our second glazing here on this part, too. More paint, less water to rough in our building, our roof, our chimneys, our foreground. And then now we're going to let this completely dry. And then in our part three, we're going to do the final glazings of the um, painting after this completely dries. So let's take a break for 15, 20 minutes and come back. All right, we'll see you on part three.